My name is Greg Broderick. I'm a urologist at Mayo Clinic, Florida. I've been practicing there for 25 years. Just about every man that's ever watched a commercial at dinner time has heard about erectile dysfunction. And they all know that that means an inability to initiate or maintain an erection. But most of my patients want to understand what causes or what regulates a normal erection. A normal erection is mediated by three factors, adequate arteries, adequate venous system, and an adequate set of nerves. So a man feels sexually stimulated either by direct touch or by thought, and the nerves trigger a response, and that response is largely vascular. The first thing that happens is that the arteries dilate. They go from being, say, the size of a garden hose to the size of a fire hose, and that floods the penis with blood. Well, that's not enough to cause rigidity. What actually has to happen internally is that vein valves have to close and trap that blood in the penis. And it's actually not a set of valves in the traditional mechanical sense. Imagine a honeycomb, a bee's honeycomb. The internal architecture of the penis is made of smooth muscle, arranged in a honeycomb, and we call these honeycomb sinusoids. And each of those sinusoids fills with blood, traps that blood, and pressure builds in the penis. Now there's a unique form of erectile dysfunction that doesn't involve the arteries at all. We typically think of the aging male as having hardening and narrowing of the arteries, and yes, that certainly does cause ED. But there can be young patients, and I mean very young patients, men who are just becoming sexually active and they discover either because their partner comments or because they realize that they can't maintain an erection. And that's generally related to the venous side of that equation, the inability to trap blood in the penis. A man presenting with a venous leak complaint doesn't come in and say, hey, I have a leaky penis. He comes in and says, I can't maintain my erection. And the first thing you have to ascertain is, is this premature ejaculation? Is the patient having too rapid an orgasm and the erection is naturally going down? Or is the patient actually telling you, no, I've had years of normal erectile function and now no matter what kind of stimulation I get, I can't maintain an erection. That's the first tip off that the patient might have a venous leak. Another common complaint is that the erection is position dependent. That is when the man is standing up and gravity is working with him, trapping some more blood in the penis, he does a better job at maintaining an erection. And as soon as he lies on his back, the erection goes away. So those are two clinical tip-offs to the presence of a venous leak. We all think that erectile dysfunction occurs to men as we age. But in this particular problem called a venous leak, it's irrespective of age. And I can see very young men coming into the office in their 20s, and I can see elderly men coming into the office in their 70s that have the problem. The only way to distinguish it from the natural changes that occur in the arteries that narrow the arteries is to do a Doppler ultrasound to figure out which half of the equation is not working. Is it the arterial side or is it the venous trapping side? The average ED patient is about 50 years of age or older and has some risk factors, things like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. And the average patient will respond very nicely to Viagra Levitro Cialis. These drugs as a class are called PDE5 inhibitors. And they're really not that different from each other other than some side effects and how long they last in the body. They're quite effective for the aging male because the aging male likely has hardening of the arteries and taking one of these pills just facilitates the blood flow into the penis. Unfortunately, if that aging male also has a venous leak, despite the entry of the blood into the penis, there's no trapping of the blood in the penis and there will be no good erection. It's only natural to ask the doctor once you've been diagnosed with a venous leak, well, what's the fix? Unfortunately, the fix doesn't occur with a tablet, and it doesn't occur with an injection, and it doesn't occur with surgery. So it's a problem that we have to kind of work around. Fortunately, there is a way to manage a venous leak. It can't be cured just yet. We manage it by trying to increase the arterial inflow in the penis. And I tell the patients that the analogy is you have a bathtub, the stopper is only partly over the drain. 
How do you get that water level to rise? You turn up the spigots. So turning up the spigots of erection means increasing arterial inflow to try and change the balance of pressure in the penis so that you can begin to build that, that pressure. And that can be done with Viagra Levitra Cialis for some men who have minor leaks. It does require penile injections if you have a more severe leak. Now there is a little trick that men figured out long before doctors entered the picture in the field of erectile dysfunction. And that's using a band at the base of the penis. A small constriction ring or a small tourniquet placed at the base of the penis will help you trap blood better and maintain your erection better. Now there's one warning about that. You wouldn't fall asleep with a rubber band tightly on your finger. You shouldn't put a metal ring onto the base of your penis because these things can cause something called ischemia and necrosis or death of the tissue. So if you're going to use a penile tourniquet or a penile band, make sure it's elastic and easily removed.